don't have my screen shared. Dum -dum -dum. Allow our screen share. Does that work for you? Yes, yes we can see your screen. Okay, then um, welcome to my talk. For those who don't know me, I'm Stefan from the Red Hat uh, desktop team. And uh, in the past few months, I uh, started to look into Pulp and the larger satellite Catello thing to um, add support for flag packs there for reasons that are we have flat packs in Fedora, we have flat packs in RHEL, we have flat packs on FlatUp. And um, yeah, the obvious thing is people would want to um, have support for them as well in their pulp, in their Catello satellite installations, similar to how they have support for RPMs or for containers, etc. So that's how I ended up here and uh, thanks for having me and let's get started. Um, so for those, I guess most of you already have more than a vague idea of what flat packs are, but very quick overview. This is from a very, very old uh, um, GNOME uh, website I dug out the other day when I looked through my notes. Um, from from times when Flatpak wasn't even yet called Flatpak, but it um, nicely uh, gives an overview of what Flatpaks actually are or, or why they were invented for, for mainly two reasons. Um, other platforms have their app stores. Um, Linux always lacked that because um, it's always difficult to have one um, image executable image built for all the different Linux distros, which all have their dependent libraries in different places or dependent uh, different versions of dependent libraries or don't have them at all. So we needed a, a, a format to, to distribute a, uh, an, an application built once to all, to all uh, Linux users on whatever distro you are. And another aspect of uh, flat packs is to, to have some kind of security in there, to have some sandboxing so that when you download an app from the apps from an app store, from a flat pack app store, and, and you don't trust it too much, then it won't be able to, to hurt you too much. You only give it access to what it actually needs and not to your whole file system, your whole home directory, to all your other precious documents that it could steal or do whatever with. So these are the two um, main ob uh, objectives that uh, Flatpak tries to address. And um, the most well known by now um, app store for Flatpaks is this uh, FlatHub initiative, where by now, I guess hundreds hundreds over hundreds of uh, different apps are available um, built by whoever apps uh, uploaded there and um, every Linux user can download them from there and, and be happy with them and use them. And I think this overall is uh, quite a success by now. We have all tons of these are just sample things that I, I um, took this screenshot this morning, so whatever recently got added there now has a five minutes of fame here in our presentation. Um, how does it all work under the lid? All flat packs um, are composed of, of two kinds of entities. We have the apps themselves, and all the apps have, uh, each app requires one specific runtime. And, and many, many of these apps uh, then, then share one runtime. So there's a uh, few runtimes only out there. There's many, many apps, but just a few, a handful of, of different runtimes. Um, the most, most used one maybe is the uh, 
free desktop one or, or and that there's a GNOME one and a KDE one. Um, and there's a Fedora one and a RHEL one. Um, but these all share the, the, the most basic of, of uh, libraries that you would expect. And whatever is not available in that runtime, then the, the app itself has to bring it along. So if you have an app that has very many special requirements that are not fulfilled by the by the runtime that it is targeting, then the app has to has to bundle whatever is missing there, which apparently works out quite well. And um, yeah, so we have these um, remotes, these repositories, these app stores. Um, where people get their Flatpak apps from, and um, there is a there is two technologies um, underlying that. There is the the original um, format was or is OS tree based, and that's used by FlatHub and uh, probably the most well known one. And there's also a, a second um, format that is OCI container based. And that is uh, especially used by the Fedora and by the RHEL um, Flatpak stores, which are just um, stores that take whatever or, or some of the apps that are available in, in Fedora or RHEL as RPMs. And from these RPMs, then repackage them as um, Flatpaks and then make them available on these stores, which has the benefit that um, if you trust your Fedora, that Fedora apps are built by people that you trust and uh, um, are, are reasonably uh, useful and secure and built with a reasonably secure tool chain so that you trust put some trust into them. Then you can also trust the Fedora RPMs because they are built by people you trust with uh, mythologies you trust, different from, say, FlatHub, where everybody can upload anything. Um, so that's the main reason why we also have these Fedora and, and Grell um, Flatpak app stores. You then install these Flatpaks either with a command line tool called Flatpak or with your um, GUI application of choice. GNOME software is the, the, the one that probably most elegantly by now, um, bun, uh, or include support for, for flat packs where really, um, really transparently allowing you to take whatever is available on your on, on the app stores that you uh, enabled. Now this talk will um, um, look closer into only the, the OCI flat packs. Why? <laughs> because um, for one, the Fedora and the RHEL um, flat packs are bundled, uh, are, are um, distributed in that format. Um, and um, my main objective is to get um, support for, for RHEL into Pulp. Um, and for another nice coincidence, uh, Pulp already has ample support for ICA containers. So it wasn't too difficult to um, add support for Flatpaks as an as kind of a special case of uh, OCI containers, which are already supported by Pulp. Um, so what we have now in Pulp is uh, off by default support for Flatpaks. You need to um, set this Flatpak index setting to true to uh, actually make it work. And um, what does your pulp then do is, well, it uh, provides some web endpoint um, that advertises all the flat packs, all the flat pack containers that are in your pulp uh, database and your pulp repo. It advertises them um, to those flat pack consumers, for example, this flat pack command line tool, um, which then um, gets its um, flat packs or knows what flat pack provided by your pulp installation and uh, downloads them from there and installs them on whatever target and machine. And um, this downloading the, the um, flat pack applications themselves uh, is uh, done via the Docker API that is also already nicely provided by pulp. So if you um, 
which is the way where uh, how you download and install um, any other Docker style um, container from from pulp. So most of the things were already nicely in place. The one thing that or the most important thing that needed uh, adding there is this um, special new web endpoint, this Flatpak index, um, which is the way to to ask your pulp installation what um, flat packs are available there. And then it gives you a, a JSON a document um, specifying all the all the um, available apps and, and runtimes in, in flat pack format. And there's two endpoints. This is how this um, flat pack index format is designed to have a static endpoint which is the one normally used by the by the tools. If you do a flat pack remote list to to show what is available on on the on a remote, then it will address that one, um, and it can also specify additional arguments like um, only give me um, flat packs for for one specific architecture or only give me the latest uh, versions of these and not advertise all. You can also have uh, multiple versions, an older version and, and a new version of one flat pack available in your in your um, store. Um, so there's uh, various um, query parameters with which you can uh, condense your, your query to just a smaller set. And there's this uh, dynamic endpoint as well. Um, that was designed so that um, which is not cached and was designed for these one-off queries. If if you have a, a user interface, for example, um, where where um, people can then search for specific um, apps, um, that these queries would then be sent via this uh, dynamic endpoint, which doesn't need caching because each uh, request would be different. So that's why we have. If you ever wonder why we have these two endpoints in, in, in the uh, pulp code now, that's why. And um, yeah, with that, I told you some stuff and um, maybe I didn't have enough coffee yet and all is a lie. But now I'll give you a short demo and hopefully it'll work and you'll see that what I right now told you, sans coffee, was actually working. Um, so for that, I'll have started up a, um, a Catello instance because all this is um, working well in a Catello sitting on top of a pulp. Ian yesterday gave us an overview of how this works. So I'll now get myself locked in. And we have there a way to populate. So what we first need to do, of course, is to get any flat packs into um, the pulp instance itself so that it then can serve them via this uh, web endpoint I was talking about. And Catello already nicely has a way to import content, including um, containers. And this is this repo discovery. And you can either take RPMs, yum stuff, or you can look for container images. And you can look into the usual suspect places, like on Docker Hub. But you can also look at your own custom place, and you can look at the uh, Fedora Flatpak registry, which has this URL. So once all this is uh, nicely settled, maybe there'll be another button. So you won't have to type this in yourself, and you can look for the uh, rel or, or Fedora um, Flatpak uh, repositories with their well-known names. But for now, you have just to type this in and we don't need a username, we don't need a password, but we can fire off a discovery. And a little while later, we see we have 416 um, different apps available on that Fedora um, app store. There's less on RHEL, but Fedora has quite a number. 
and it also has all these uh, run times I was talking about. You see them down here for all the different uh, Fedora versions. Uh, they they, they um, grew over time. So whenever a new Fedora version comes out, somebody creates a new runtime targeting that version. And then people um, update their apps to target that runtime. And then you can click on some of these and, and download them. And that takes a while. So I already uh, prepared that uh, and, and uh, um, imported the data for some of these um, apps and uh, runtimes into my pulp instance. And with that, I'll switch over to the command line to use the Flatpak um, command line tool. And I first add uh, this Pulp or Catello instance as a remote. So there's a Catello down here, which is the name you can choose. And then there's this uh, way of telling Flatpak um, that this is the endpoint of my example thing. And there's uh, this pulp registry, which Ian also to uh, talked about yesterday, because Catello repackages pulp itself with a different um, web URL or with a, in a sub, uh, sub tree pub core registry. And with that, we are at that. And then we can do a Flatpak remote LS, which I talked about, which um, accesses this um, endpoint and lists all the um, apps and runtimes that are available. And what I had done without showing you, I had prepared that um, is um, import these, this one application cheese and uh, two runtimes because in the past it was depending on runtime version Fedora 38. By now it's already depending on the latest one, so I had to pull that in as well. And with that, and um, we can also install this. Um, we install from the Scatello. We Does it automatically pull in the um, flat no, the the runtime? It, it it doesn't uh, yet pull in. So if you select one of the apps, it doesn't check yet what uh, runtime it uses and doesn't pull in that as well. So that's something that uh, asks for implementation, of course, so that um, yeah you don't end up with an with an uh, pulling in an app that uh, lacks its its runtime. Um, but for now, you have to be omni knowledgeable and. Um, do that yourself. Um, so we want to install this now. It asks us whether we also want to install the runtime, which is then which it then also finds at the Catello remote. We want to do that. We want to install these two. And uh, now the um, the uh, Docker API on Catello on, on Pulp sits behind some authentication. So usually when you download an, uh, a container, you do this uh, Docker login or a Portman login where you present your credentials and um, um, the Flatpak command line tool also has this authenticator thing um, that I used up there in the and uh, I should not talk and type at the same time. Because I mistyped then. But now it worked. And now it's downloading, which takes a little while for the platform, which is rather large. This is also why I pre-synced it in, pre-pulled it in, because that would have taken even longer over the internet. Is your Foreman running not on your computer? It's uh, running locally. OK. Foreman on a yeah, local VM. So it still takes a while. I'm not sure why. For demo effects. <laughs> but now it worked. And there we go. We do a flat pack run org gnome cheese. And something shows up. 
and a very, very dark Stefan appears on that screen. So this works. Demo worked. Nothing exciting. Um, here we are. Which is the end of my talk. So if you have any questions, shoot. So I'll start, Stefan, since I put my hand up first. Um, what was the what was the hardest part for you for getting this this uh, PR in for Pulp? Um, yeah, the hardest part was uh, getting my head around Pulp in the first place. So I came into this uh, with zero knowledge of, of anything of this and um, was tasked with add this to satellite. And then I had to um, get an idea of what satellite is, how it is composed of all these different pieces, and uh, find my way into pulp, um, which then was the first place to 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 do anything. Um, once I was there, um, it, it kind of I'm not a Python person, um, so this is it, it didn't flow for my fingers, I'd say, but. Um, yeah, it was it, it was kind of uh, not too hard, I would say. Then once I once I found the place where where I would do need to do something. Very cool, thank you, Ina. Um, so Flatpak is being packaged as a regular OCI image following the OCI standards and the OCI runtime spec, even though you cannot run it. Right, you can add the Podman run because you're using the Flatpak CLI to uh, pull the chain, pull pull the content and install it. Um, this was one of the options up until now. How people were trying to package different kind of artifacts into the OCI image and store it in the container registry. Um, and so recently, with the Refers API, uh, it would provide a proper way how to. Um, properly package OCI artifacts and let them be started from the registry. So my question is, uh, do you know if uh, the flat pack will also take advantage of the reverse API or not? And mm. the reverse API, it's a new specification uh, where you will declare, it's a bit different than the OCI image, but you will be able to dec declare it, manifest and relate the artifacts to it. Mm, okay, so this is the first time I I hear about that. So um, the answer would probably be no or not yet. Okay. Hold on. Uh, hey, Stefan, uh, with flat packs, we have flat field that we can manage the sandbox permissions that we have. Like we can download the flat pack and change the permissions in the machine. Do you see we implementing something like flat seal for hosting the flat packs on Patello or Pope? Um, like... No, I would, would, would um, say that. Um, so this is, uh, so every uh, flat pack comes um, with a declaration of what it wants to have. Um, and that is part of this flat pack format and I, wouldn't assume that we would want to um, add some code to Pulp or Catello to modify this, but to just um, so you can modify that, of course, on your end machine, or when you um, import a flat pack into a Pulp, you can. Uh, before doing that, you could, of course, modify the the the, the flat pack um, to have different. Uh, to, to request a, a smaller set of, of uh, requirements or allowances. And um, so there's no plans to to add into Pulp or Cotello a way to, to modify these in that part of the world. But you can also always, of course, use something like flat seal to, to uh, cut down on, on, on what is uh, available to any given flat pack that you then install. Thank you. Matthias? Um, so you say a flat pack is 
uh, a valid OCI image. Does that mean it's built with Builder or Podman Compose too? Uh, Podman no, Build, it's, or it's built there... in a completely different way. Um, okay. But what falls out of that is is uh, in in this uh, OCI format. So if uh, I mean, for example, in pub container, there's a built there's an image builder basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that, that doesn't if work. That would need to support flat packs. That would need to call something else than yeah, Podman yeah. Um, build. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do applications that are on Flat Hub get packaged with different runtimes? Because you mentioned some of them are like uh, the windowing system based, you know, so there's like a GNOME one and a KDE one. Do um, you see that? Yes, the Flat Hub ones are A, typically using different uh, runtimes. Um, and B um, are using this diff this other um, technology of uh, OS tree based images, so they are not per se supported by by Pulp. There is ways to translate between these two formats, and an idea is to um, use that. For example, in in Pulp, use a little script that will translate from one to the other to also support um, FlatHub, which would probably be. We have an OS tree plugin actually, which I think could sync. Yes, I saw that and and wondered whether that would would uh, be useful uh, in the end for this. But uh, that's not yet decided how how that would actually work. Then, so we have that on our to do list, um, as it would presumably be something that that uh, users will want to have also when they see there's support for flat packs at all then they will also want to have, have support for flat hub presumably yeah. so something will need to be added there hey folks i'm going to hop in here it is half past the hour and we have another talk coming up and i want to make sure that we don't uh take up all of david's time um qu Let's any questions that you have yes thank you stefan i can push the button actually yeah i'll stop recording